What historical fact makes you feel like crying? A story from my great-grandfather who fought in WW1. Soldiers would cease fire to pick up their men's bodies and would have a smoke together, go back to their trenches and start firing again. Neither side of front-line soldiers actually wanted to be there. Just drafted for war. Edit, thanks for all the upvotes and awards. It doesn't exactly make me cry, but Albert Goring, the staunchly anti-Nazi brother of Hermann Goring, spent the Second World War helping Jews and dissidents to escape. He was caught several times, but was let off the hook due to his brother's influence within the Reich. After the war, he was shunned for his last name and his accomplishments forgotten. I take solace in the fact that he never did it for the recognition. Some of the world's greatest deeds have come from nameless men and women. The Rape of Nanking in 1937 Looking up photos of what the Japanese did there left me silent for a while. They raped and murdered women, bayonet babies, you can look up a photo of it, used the wounded as rifle and bayonet practice, forced mothers on their sons and fathers on their daughters, and made a contest out of beheading civilians. There is a Japanese newspaper article you can look up about it. It's disgusting, and the worst part about it is that the Japanese government denies most of these acts. Along with a lot of other war crimes that they committed afterwards. It always shakes me to my core to know that human beings are capable of doing such horrible things to one another. And smile while doing it. After the Pearl Harbor attack, at least some men were alive in a pocket of air inside one of the capsized ships. Navy personnel could hear them banging on the hull and trying to signal for help, but there was no way to get at them safely. The water was full of fuel and oil, so blowtorches weren't a workable idea. And there was no way for divers to get into the ship because the damage had rendered the whole thing a death trap of twisted steel. There wasn't even any way to communicate with the trapped men. So the guards at Pearl Harbor had to listen to those calls for help getting weaker and weaker, while inside everyone slowly suffocated. When they hauled the ship up for scrap later, there were 16 notches scratched onto the wall of that compartment, which means at least one casualty of Pearl Harbor lived until December 23, 1941. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire The doors to the exit and the stairwells were locked. So you either had to jump out the window or be burned alive. I'm sure I'm paraphrasing but regulations are written in blood. That's what my dad says about his job at the railroad. The rule book is written in blood. Dangerous shit. One of the girls in the Donner party was fed her dead mother and told afterwards. They had an agreement to not feed people their family members, but they had broken off from the camp in an attempt to find rescue. She would randomly burst into tears about it at school years later. The whole story of the Donner Party is so horrible and sad and it bothers me that it's just used for cannibal jokes. Teddy Roosevelt's mother Mitty and his wife Alice, who had just given birth days before, both died in the same house on the same day, hours apart from each other. In his diary entry that day, he drew a large black X and scribbled the light has gone out of my life. That's some heavy shit right there, man. He lost his son Quentin too in World War I. When his aircraft was shot down by German soldiers they discovered that he was Roosevelt's son and buried him with full military honors and funeral as they respected the president's son for wanting to fight. I learned about this in a Dan Carlin podcast. During the German-Soviet War, there was a Red Army soldier who sang each night with a hauntingly beautiful voice. His comrades would give him their tea rations and scarves to protect his larynx. One night, he couldn't sing because he had gotten sick. A German soldier crawled across no man's land and tossed something into the Soviet trench, the Soviet soldiers thought it was a grenade. However, it was a package containing a letter asking if the singer was okay and if he needed medicine. A truly heartwarming moment in an otherwise horrific front. Edit, thanks for the awards and upvotes. Seriously though, if you are even remotely interested in history, you can't go wrong with hardcore history. I never knew that I wanted to listen to a man talk about a topic for 16 hours.